we are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam Mahapuram first canto. Today we are starting chapter two. Divinity and divine service. Vyasa Uvach Iti Samprashna Sam Hrishto Vipranam Roma Harshani. Prati puja vacha stesham pravaktum upa chakrami. Ugrašrava or Sutta Gusami, the son of Roma Harshan, being fully satisfied by the perfect questions of the Brahmanas, thanked them and thus attempted to reply. <coughs> we should ask relevant questions for our eternal welfare. Then Guru will be very pleased and he will be grateful also for such questions and he will give that knowledge. Sutta Uvach Yam Pravajantam Anupetam Apeta Kritam Dve Payano Viraha Katara Ajuhava Putretitan Maya Taya Taravo Bhinedus Tam Sarvabhuta Hridayam Munim Anatos Mi. He is giving Pranam Mantra first. Shila Sutta Gosami said, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto that great sage, Shukadev Gosami, who can enter the hearts of all. When he went away to take up the renounced order of life, sannyas, leaving home without undergoing reformation by the sacred thread or the ceremonies observed by the higher castes, his father, Vyasadev, fearing separation from him, cried out, O oh my son! Indeed, only the trees which were absorbed in the same feelings of separation echoed in response to the begrieved father. <coughs> Here we see, this is proper. Before speaking Harikata, one has to pray for the grace of Guru and offer obeisances to him because only by his grace we can speak for the satisfaction of Krishna. That is why you saw in our Gurudev and all other charges, they will pray before offer innumerable obeisances, pray for grace to give me strength, all this you have heard. So, here in Puranic Charitavali book of our Gurudev, in the biography of Vyasadev, I think, you will find there, Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Sarastakur explained that we should not mistake here Vyasadev calling, O Putra Putra, O Son, with some material affection, some material relation. No, he was feeling separation, grief from like a Vaishnav. In that transcendental uh, separation, grief he was calling to him, not in material affection. When, because, you know, Shukadev Goswami did not want to come out from the womb, fearing that he does not want to get entangled in Maya. Then Krishna promised him, no, you will not come into Maya. Then he came out, but immediately started running away to the forest. So here also, because he was already Brahma Gyani and devotee, so for him there is no necessary of this sacred thread ceremony and this. This is for conditioned souls uh, who, if they are conditioned by Satyaguna, then they will be Brahmins, so they have to have this all ceremonies and sanskaras for gradual elevation. But he was already realized soul, so there was no need. Immediately he left 
<coughs> like Joram Bharat also you, later will come. His father tried his best to teach him about duties of Brahmanas and Gayatri and everything, but he acted like as if he is a fool to be released from that. But because he was already pure devotee, Jorabhat, for him there is no necessity of this. So first we have to offer obeisance to Gurudev and Vaishnavas and pray for their grace. Then we should with great humbleness, we should speak Harikata, what we have heard, as our devotional practice. Yahsvanu bhavam akila shruti saram ekam adhyatma dipam atiti tir shatam tanom dham tamon tamon dham sangsarinam karunayaha purana guhyam tam vyasa sunum upayami gurum muninam. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him, Shukade Pusami the spiritual master of all sages, the son of Vyasadeva, who out of his great compassion for those gross materialists who struggle to cross over the darkest regions of material existence, spoke this most confidential supplement to the cream of Vedic knowledge. After having personally assimilated it, by experience. Guru must have these two qualities, Shrotriya and Brahmanishta, or Shabde Parechanishnatam. In Bhagavatam, and that I think that is Mundaka Upanishad. Shrotriya means he must be well versed in all Vedic scriptures, not by memorizing, but knowing the meaning, purpose. Or he must receive mantra from a right preceptorial channel. Because in that mantra, all Vedic knowledge is there. It is in a seed. So if one will submit, then everything will be revealed. There is no need to read the books. If you sincerely chant the mantra, in that mantra, everything is there, everything will be revealed. Like uh, Narad Goswami gave to Vyasadeva only four shlokas, transcendental shlokas. By meditating on that, he saw everything in his purified heart and he wrote whole Bhagavatam about that. So these two, two meanings, he must be well versed in all Vedic scriptures and or he must receive mantra from bona fide preceptorial channel. But he also has to have Brahmanishta or Parachanishnatam. Means he must have realization of Supreme Lord. Then he can properly uh, present that and can guide others towards that realization according to their eligibility. Otherwise, he will not be able. He must have realization. And when he has realization, he is not influenced by any six enemies, Kama, Kroda, Loba, Muhammadah, Matsarja. There, Bishwana Chakura Thakur explained how aspirants can know whether Guru has realization or not by observing him, if he comes under the influence of lust, anger, greed, and these things, he does not have realization. Because one who has realization, is fully dedicated to Krishna, he's already purified of those things. He may use anger, but that is different thing. And our Gurudev also explained, because in a purified heart, the disciples mind is reflected there. Guru will see what is in the mind 
or in the heart of disciple? What is the defect? What is his thinking? Everything he knows. It is seen in his heart. So according to that, he will give advice. It is not same for all. So one time also one Brahmachari was, he came to our Gurudev and he was speaking something. Then Gurudev was just hearing. Then that Brahmachari went out. Then Gurudev said to one another, our God brother, he's lying. Then that God brother asked Gurudev, how you know? Then Gurudev explained, because in purified heart, you see everything like in a mirror, clean mirror. If there is dirt, then that reflection will not, but in clear heart you can see. Then later it was actually proved, revealed, confirmed that actually that Brahmachari was lying. So Guru knows everything. He also knows whether one is surrendered or not. If someone is surrendered, Guru will guide. If not, he will not guide. Or we have that example of Prabhupada knowing that Ram Das Prabhu is pure devotee. He's working in garden and serving cows and everything, but he's a pure devotee. He actually knows what is Bhagavad. So he sent that person to him. But Prabhupada also knew for another person who was serving externally very much in the mud. But Prabhupada said he's speaking all the time. All other devotees, they were thinking he's a very good devotee. He's always silent and doing whatever you tell him to do. But Rao said he's all the time speaking. You heard this before, so only in short time telling. He quarreled with his wife. So in order to like give a lesson to his wife, he left her and went to stay in the mat, thinking she will regret she will come to me with humbleness, she will apologize and like this, so I will stay there till that time. But she did not come. But he was doing everything in the mud. But I externally doing everything, but internally all the time speaking, when she will come, when she will come, why she is not coming, when will I see her again, when will I see my children, all the time he's speaking this, not outside, but inside. So Prabhupada knows everything. Guru knows everything about us. So he revealed this. And really it was proved later on that he lost his patience. Then he himself left the mat and went home. He did not come to the mat to serve Krishna, but to give lesson to his wife. Ultimately he got lesson from his wife. So Guru knows everything in that purified heart, because a realized soul. We cannot deceive Gurudev or Krishna. Once Gurudev said, Guru knows everything, but he will not say every time, because that may discourage them. Oh, Gurudev already knows everything, then they, they will run away. So Guru does not always say, but he knows. Or, as we know, Draupadi, she played that pastime of telling Krishna, why you came so late? I was calling you, but you came very late. Then Krishna said, why you are saying like this? I immediately I came. Yes, you were calling my name, but you took shelter of all others. And ultimately you also thought, I will rescue myself by holding that sari. But when you could not, and others also were not doing anything, then when you took shelter of me, calling me, immediately I came. Is it not? Then Draupadi could not uh, refute this. He said, yes, it is true. So we cannot deceive Krishna we cannot deceive Guru. They know everything. It is in our best interest to divulge ourselves to them, means open ourselves to them, 
clearly, open-heartedly with surrender. Then they will help us, actual, actual help. So Shukadev Goswami, because Sutta Goswami, he is disciple of Shukadev Goswami. He was hearing there when Shukadev Goswami was speaking to Parikit Maharaj, Sutta Goswami was hearing. And he means uh, Shukadev Goswami spoke that Bhagavatam from his own experience, from his own realization having personally assimilated it by experience. Then that Harikata will have impact, effect. Our Gurudev said that, that Aranya Maharaja, they were not learned outwardly, but they were surrendered to their Guru and by their Guru's grace, Prabhupada's grace, everything was revealed in their heart and they spoke Harikata and that had impact on others. Once also it happened, I heard recently in one Harikata of Gurudev in Minsk, Belarus, he gave example of Krish, Krish, uh, Krishna Keshav Prabhu. He was Prabhupada Sevak for some time. Later on he was with our Parangurdev in Chaitanya Guryamat assisting. So once in Chaitanya Mat in Mayapur, <coughs> One great pandit came to Chaitanya Math and he came to there and he met Krishna Kesha Prabhu and he started some debate. And Krishna Kesha Prabhu does not know like externally Shastra, any shlokas or, or these things. Not very academically learned in material or the Shastric knowledge. But he gave some points by giving some simple examples and that Pandit was astonished how he refuted me, how this is possible. He could not argue with him. He was totally defeated by Krishna Geshavaru, how this is possible because their surrender to Guru and that revealed knowledge, realized knowledge is revealed in their heart. And they're speaking that. Munayak sadhu prishto ham bavadbir loka mangalam yat kritah krishna samprashno yenatma suprasidati. O oh, sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. Again, I remember Gurudev, maybe Russia or Belarus or Ukraine, I don't remember. So many questions they were asking. <laughs> then Gurudev said that actually these questions are all useless because you are not, you will not be able to understand by intellect. If we ask out of curiosity for some external meaning or knowledge and like this, then that is not. Uh, that will not benefit you and it is no use of asking this. Guru said you should ask how that self-effulgent truth will be revealed to me. Not trying by intellect to understand. We have to practice Sharanagati, service. This we have to inquire. Honest inquiry. And many times it happened that here in these recordings that they have many questions. <laughs> but Gurudev said, first let me speak something, then after question. So then 
Gurudev is speaking and while he's speaking, he's answering all their questions already. How you know? Because after that, they are asking and you can see and Gurudev saying already I told, already I told, already I told. It really it was. But we, in at least Westerners, there is this tendency. We we hear just to to somehow finish that class, and but we are very eager when question answer. But in India it is not like that. In India you have to hear Harikata. If you submissively hear Harikata, then all your questions will be answered automatically. If you are surrendered, if there is some remaining, then you can ask separately with that humble mood and relevant questions, not just for the sake of inquiring or gathering intellectual knowledge and like this. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self about our eternal welfare, about Krishna, how to serve him, how he can be revealed all this. Because Krishna is inspiring. Krishna is descending through Guru, that Harikata is descending, and that is answering all questions automatically, if it is transcendental sound. But if it is not, then you may answer all questions physically that accordingly, but there will be no benefit. So one has to be realized, so then he can pacify, he can satisfy. Not by intellect. Savai Pungshang Paro Dharma. Jato bhaktir adokshaje ahoituki apratihata yayatma suprasiddhati. This is very famous verse. We have to meditate very deeply on this point. The supreme occupation or dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. No other activity can completely satisfy us, except this one, because this one is natural according to our constitutional position, eternal. For all jivas, Adokshaja Bhagavan means one who reserves the right of not being exposed to material senses. That is Adokshaja, beyond material senses. So devotion unto him is supreme occupation, but it has to be pure means uninterrupted constantly because Krishna is eternal, we are eternal, devotion is eternal, and unmotivated means without any selfish motives. It is motivated. Motivation is satisfaction of Krishna. But here when it is said unmotivated means all this not for dharma, artha, kama and the moksha this desire should not be there. Then it will not be pure devotion and that cannot satisfy us. Only pure, transcendental, uninterrupted, exclusively only for his satisfaction, then we can be happy. Not by the fulfillment of our selfish desires. When we satisfy Krishna's desires, then we are happy. Because that is constitutionally our uh, position. Like hand, hand is in the body, 
and by the body, maintained by the body and from the body. Hen. That verse of Taitiriya Upanishad is there. Jatova imani bhutani jayante, jeno jatani jivanti, yat prajanti abhisham vishanti, tat bijigya sasva, tat eva brahma. You should inquire about him, that supreme brahma, from whom all living entities are coming out, they are maintained by him, and they are entering into him, they are in him. So this hand, our Parangurdev explained, is from the body, by the body, and in the body. So, should remain for the body. Then she can be satisfied. If hands, hand gives food to the stomach, then stomach will properly distribute that to all parts and all will be happy. Or when you water at the root of tree, root will properly distribute everywhere, then everyone will get. But if you give separately food to the hand or hand will protest and why I will give to stomach. Stomach is only eating and sitting, not doing any work. Why I will serve? I will take by myself food, but that will not be in her interest. Yes, stomach is only sitting and eating, but he is distributing properly, digesting and distributing. Like that, Krishna is Achyuta. Nothing can be detached from him. He is all unifying spiritual principle. When we serve him, Bhagavatam says, then all will be properly nourished. Otherwise, cannot be. So, according to our constitutional position, we are eternal servant of Krishna. Only when we serve him for his satisfaction, we can be happy. Naturally, that fulfillment will be there because we are in natural position. So, that is why here Sutta Goswami is telling if you want to be fully satisfied, which every living entity wants to be, then this is the only way. You have to serve Krishna purely unmotivated, no any other desires, exclusively for his satisfaction and always. Then you can be happy. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayati ashu vairagyam jnanam chayat ahoitukam. By rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Transcendental knowledge means you will know everything. That one verse is there. Today one devotee reminded me in Upanishad, Jasmin Gyata Sarangyata Bhavati, something that, that by knowing whom you know everything, you know all. By attaining whom you attain all. That is supreme Lord. Is everything. So if one will be connected to Krishna, that is possible only through service, having connection with him, then all knowledge is there automatically. And also detachment from this worldly perception, illusion, will be released, relieved. Dharmah svanushtitaha punksham vishvakshena vishvakshena katasuya not padet yadiratim shrama eva hi kevalam. For the previous verse or so, 
there was one Sajjananda Brahmachari. He was a personal sevak of Prabhupada Bhakti Sarastaku. And very nicely he was serving. Although he was Brahmachari, but everyone used to call him Maharaj because of his all good qualities. So after 10 years of service, he asked once Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm serving you now for 10 years, but I did not receive anything. I don't feel I got anything. Then so many other disciples also, they came near to hear the reply of Prabhupada because they also had such question, but they were afraid to ask. Then Prabhupada was looking with surprise and he asked him, you did not get Harinam? Yes, I got Harinam. Then he said, then you got everything. Harinam is Hari. Hari is everything. Complete reality. You got him. So what more is there to be attained? But the thing is, we are not realizing. According to our submission, according to our service, we can realize. And when you come out from Maya, then you will fully understand who is Harina. Not different from Krishna. So that is why all emancipated souls, they are constantly worshipping Harina. They are chanting in worship. Upanishads, they are worshipping Harinam. We have no realization, so we think, no, there is some sound and something, some concrete thing I need. But under the, in association of pure devotees, if we serve Harinam, then gradually we can realize. The occupational activities a man performs according to his own position are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of the personality of Godhead. That is Varnashram Dharma. Following Varnashram Dharma, if it does not lead you to devotion to Krishna, then that is useless labor. It is not unto itself meant. It is meant for this purpose. Yes, now it will be more clearly explained. Dharmasya hya pavargasya nartor tayo pakalpate. Nartasya dharmai kantasya kamo labhaya hi smritaha. Kamasya nendriya pritir labo jiveta javata jiva. Uh, that is another. All occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Furthermore, according to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. So we are to follow Varna Ashram Dharma, but not for any material purpose, only to maintain our life so that we can do bhajan in favor of that, not separated. And whatever we gain material, should not be used for sense gratification. Because now this next verse is also a very important verse. It clearly explains why. Kamasya nendriya pritir labho jiveta javata jivasya tattva jigyasa narto yascheha karma bhi. Life's desire should never be directed toward sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self-preservation. 
since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's work. Purpose is to inquire about absolute truth or to worship him by Shravan Kirtan. And all occupational work according to Varnashan Dharma is for maintenance of our body so that we can do this, inquire into absolute truth or serve him. If it is disconnected or unfavorable, then that is useless or for sense gratification, uh, like, then that is useless. Then we are disconnected from the purpose of human life. In human life, we got it only for this purpose that we will realize Supreme Lord and rescue ourselves from Maya and attain his eternal abode, our home, back home, back to God. And that is the purpose of human life. So this practice is there, inquiry, and after inquiring, you will worship him by Shravan Kirtan and maintenance according to Varna Ashram Dharma, uh, because in that way, Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, it will be more easy for your maintenance, if you do according to your natural qualities and inclination, and you should avoid all sinful activities. That is already prescribed in Varna Ashram Dharma. But our Gurudev told that even now in India, Varna Ashram Dharma is not followed properly because they are determining according to birth, not according to qualities. And there are no Brahmins or sages who will determine what is someone's qualities like this. So that was lost. Uh, even in India, there is some, he said, there is some outward show of that, but also much misuse and this, that is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not give importance on this. He came to give Harinam. You do Harinam. You chant Harinam and somehow maintain your life, avoiding sinful activities, what is suitable, then that will help. So healthy life for the sake of bhajan and survival means maintenance for the sake of bhajan in favor of bhajan that should be accepted and bhajan in bhakti samrita sindhu 64 kinds of devotion eighth one is this one should accept material things not too much not too less and in favor of bhajan here also means how you will get it ascetics they are begging Householders, they are earning. So this is there. So we should not neglect this part, but also we should not neglect that part. Someone is thinking, I will only maintain my life, survive. That is all I have to do. And for sense gratification, that is the goal of life. No. Goal of life is to realize Krishna. So we have to do both as one target. Vadanti tattva vidas tattvam yad gyanam advayam brahmiti paramatmiti bhagavan iti shabdete. Alarant transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, or Bhagavan. Because in previous verse it was stated Jiveta javata jivasya tattva jigyasa. One has to inquire about tattva, that is truth, eternal truth. I heard one devotee recently, Jigyasa. No, it is Jigyasa, Brahma Jigyasa, not Brahma Jigyasa. This Tattva Jigyasa. In, in Upanishad, many 
At many places you will find this. Tad vijigyasasva, you should inquire. Jigyasa. So what is that tattva of which we have to inquire or research or know or realize is this. Some call that tattva as Brahman, some as Paramatma, some as Bhagavan. Why? According to their level of realization of that all-pervading eternal absolute truth. Gyanis, they can realize that same one non-dual truth as Brahman. Yogis as Paramatma, devotees as Bhagavan. Devotees who realize Bhagavan, they automatically also realize Paramatma and Brahman because they are related to Bhagavan. They are Anshas and Bhagavan is Angshi. In Jeva Dharma you will find, they are dependent on Bhagavan because Paramatma is partial manifestation of Bhagavan, all opulent, supreme Lord, almighty Bhagavan, with all potencies and Brahman. Paramatma is his partial manifestation and Brahman is his Jyoti, light, shine. But they are not different. They are not separate. They are inseparable. They are same substance. But realized, up to the, like our Guru have said, if you uh, from far you see, you will see like some cloud. But when you come more near, you will see it is a mountain. And when you come more near, you will see there are many trees and everything is there. So like that, although seeing same thing from beginning till the same thing, but your perception is more uh, precise. Tachrada dhana munayo jnana vairagya yuktaya pasyanti atmani chatmanam Bhaktya Shruta Grihitaya. The seriously inquisitive student or sage, well equipped with knowledge and detachment. When you have knowledge, automatically detachment is there. Naturally. He realizes that absolute and that absolute truth by rendering devotional service in terms of what he has heard from the Vedanta Shruti. Bhakti Shruti Grihitaya. Vedas Grihitaya. Shruti means that which is heard. The breathing of Supreme Lord is Vedas, not different from him. Vedas are mercy of Krishna. Our Gurudev quoted there from Chaitanya Charitamrita. When we are averse, we are in Maya, then Sadhu Shastra Kripai Jodi Krishna Mukhoi Sejiv Nistari Maya Tahar Charai. By coming in contact with Shastra, Shastra appears in this world. That is mercy of Krishna. And by Sadhu, then you become inclined to the service of Krishna. So Shruti means that which is heard directly. The sages in their Samadhi, they heard that sound of the Upanishad and then they wrote. Upanishads are eternal. They are not created by anyone. They are transcendental sound and you can catch it in Samadhi. So they wrote, but they, they, they are not the authors. And the meaning of all Upanishads is clarified in Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva. 
and Veda uh, the commentary to Vedanta Sutra is Bhagavatam. That is Smriti. You have Shruti and Smriti. Smriti are Puranas and this. When someone realized the truth and he wrote about it, then that is Smriti. So Bhagavatam is also Smriti and comes into the category of Puranas, but it is spotless Purana. Uh, Amala Purana, spotless Purana, pure. There is no uh, some, according to the level, like doctor, he will say to that boy, I will give you Rasa Gula if you take this medicine. So there is some, something is there. But in Bhagavatam, it is pure. That is why only those who are pure in heart, they can understand. Pure evidence, no uh, any mixture of anything. So Bhagavatam is Bhagavatam and Vedanta Sutra, they are the same thing, with the same purpose. But Bhagavatam is more clear. And you should understand the meaning of Brahma Sutra, Vedanta Sutra, in the light of Bhagavatam. Then it is okay. And you should understand Gayatri Mantra in the light of Bhagavatam. You should understand Mahabharata in the, light, the Gita also there. In the light of Bhagavatam, then it will be proper. Yasadev himself wrote in that Garuda Puran that um, you will find the meaning of Brahma Sutra, Gayatri, and Mahabharata in Bhagavatam. Proper meaning. That is why there is no need of any other Shastra. You just have to hear Bhagavatam. Of course, for preaching sake, if it is necessary, if Guru engages someone, like our Parangurdev, he engaged our Turjashri Maharaj, that he should study Vedanta and Upanishads and all this. Uh, so he did under the guidance of Gurudev. That is proper. But if Gurudev uh, is not giving you this type of service, but some other, like even our Gurudev, he said, I could not read much books, even Vedanta Sutra, because when I came in Math, I was engaged in the service all the time. So I had no time to read books, but I was hearing Harikata from Vaishnavas and doing what I had to do. So uh, everything is revealed. There, everything you know. Only you hear that sutra, you will immediately understand if you are pure in heart. But some get that service, that is okay if they get. But otherwise, not absolutely necessary. Even it is not absolutely necessary to read Bhagavatam. If you are just accepting Harinam, because the purpose of Bhagavatam is to take us to the chanting of Harinam. If one can chant without offenses, Harinam, he will realize, Gurudev told me personally, if you will chant Harinam with single-minded attention, without offenses, then in your sanctified heart, you will see what is written in Bhagavatam. Directly you will see, no need to read the book, you will perceive. And also one time someone was asking, also I also was asking something, some meaning of shloka or that. <clears throat> then Guru said only external meaning you will know. That is not the point. You have to practice. Then you will realize the meaning according to your surrender, that meaning will be revealed to you. Only having external intellectual, this meaning, that is not uh, the point.
So how we can realize by rendering devotional service in terms of what he has heard from the Vedanta Shruti. Gurki Shurdas Babaji Maharaj never read scriptures by himself because he was illiterate. But Prabhupada said, in one particle of dust of his lotus feet, absolute knowledge is there. Because he realized so by chanting Harinam. Atah Pumbir Dvija Shreshta Varnashrama Vibhaga Shaha Svanushti Tasya Dharmasya Sang Sidir Hari Toshanam. O best among the twice born, it is therefore concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging the duties prescribed for one's own occupation according to caste divisions and orders of life is to please the personality of Godhead. So our Gurudev said, whatever is suitable for you, that kind of profession without sinful activities, they, they, sh they, they not be involved and for this purpose, for facilitating budget, then that will be proper, you will get benefit. So, for this, uh, we have to do for the satisfaction of Krishna, not for sense gratification. This one verse I read. Tasmat ekena manasa bhagavan sattva tampati shrotavya kirtitabhyascha dhyaya pujyascha nitada. Our Gurudev also quoted this verse. Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember, and worship the personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. Therefore, we have to do, and our Gurudev also explained, this word glorify, although Srila Sai Maharaj meant in proper sense, one should speak the glories of Supreme Lord. But our Gurudev found in Oxford Dictionary, the glorify word means to like in a, in a way or like a flattering that you speak some more exaggerated about someone more than actually it is there, his qualities. That is glorify, to, to exalt him or something in that way. So Gurudev said that in that sense glorify is wrong. We should not use this uh, in this sense to glorify Supreme Lord. No one can increase the glories of Supreme Lord to tell more than actually is there. No, we are always unable to fully sing his glories. That is why you will find in our Gurudev's expression, he will always say to sing the glories. He will not use to glorify Supreme Lord, to glorify Vaishnavas, but he will always use, we have to sing the glories of Vaishnavas and we have to sing the glories of Supreme Lord. But he also explained, we are never able to actually fully sing the glories because they are unlimited and we are incapable. But if we with humbleness, with devotion we do, then that will be accepted. Gurudev gave one example that actually if we, with vanity, we, we try to speak, we will actually criticize because we cannot say the glories of Supreme Lord. But with humbleness, if we do, then that will be accepted. And he gave one example in one village in India. They were all poor and like this, but one son of one family, somehow he could manage and he became a high court judge, means like some very high position in Calcutta. So then when he came back to that village, then they told to his grandmother at that time, she was very old. They said he returned from Calcutta and now he's, 
having education and high position like this. Then grandmother blessed him, said, yes, you should become like constable or something in that uh, village, like some watchman or something, because according to her idea, that was the highest position. So what she was blessing was that he should have high position, but his position was so much high that it was incomparable to what she was blessing him. But because she did not do in wrong 